everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this um, double column card or double pillar card. Whenever you kind of put in that word, this is the kind of shape that you, you get in cards. So some of them are just singular with just this piece and then, you know, bits and pieces around it. But that's the closest I could find to really kind of call this. I may change it, you'll know if I did or not because it would be in the title. So. Um, but I've put this one together and again I really like it because it just folds completely flat like so. So this then becomes a six and a half by six um, and I've made an envelope with my envelope um, punch board and you can see there that it just very neatly fits inside. Obviously be careful of any decorative bits that you've got on it but um, it makes it really nice obviously to post. So this one here is just using um, mainly hobby base so we've got hobby base dies here and the hobby base hobby base bird cage die which is really pretty now i haven't put a sentiment on it because i'm not sure whether i would end up using this for a wedding or an anniversary um, or an engagement so there's a few there that it's kind of ready to to be ready you know ready for so um, if i just bring it up a bit close there you can just see i've just made little clusters there and um, made this bunting using um, one of the dies from the nest of five and then those lovely papers there so the one i'm going to be showing you today is using the may um most of the supplies from the may hobby base kit so um i'm gonna pop that one to one side and just bring in what i'm going to be using so i've just got this one piece here for the minute now basically in the unboxing i had this um card here which was a gatefold so it came like that and then I thought actually I can make it into this card here which I'd already had made so I was waiting to kind of you know um, share it with you guys so I'm going to share it this way so now the measurements of this one are slightly different to this one here so I'm actually going to tell you the measurements because this is the one you want because this one actually um, isn't um, I thought it was six by six but it's actually just shy of that so I had to score mine slightly different um, but in terms of putting it together I'm going to talk you through so this is your piece here and yours will be 12 by six Okay, so you want a piece of cardstock that's 12 by 6. You can see there, mine's coming in slightly short, just a little bit there, but it just meant that I had to adapt to my measurements. So I'm going to talk you through, but I'm not going to actually score myself. But you want to score at a quarter of an inch, then one and one quarter, two and one quarter, and three and one quarter. And then all the way along here, and you then want to do eight and three quarters, nine and three quarters, 10 and three quarters, and 11 and three quarters. Okay, so you will have two tabs that are a quarter of an inch, and then you should have three panels on each side that are one inch in uh, width, minus seven eighths of an inch. So I just had to alter mine just ever so slightly. So then you will need for the mat inside here, this piece measures three and three quarters by five and three quarters. For the side panels here, these are five and three quarters by three quarters of an inch. And then for this strip here, it's five and a half by one for the red one behind. And then the blue one on top is five and a half by three quarters. Okay, so that's all the measurements to have that exact same size. Now I'm gonna show you how to put it together. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. And what you want to do is I'm going to use some of my red tape just because this card has got a glossy finish but it's absolutely gorgeous and I just I yeah I just had to use it straight away as soon as I got the box that that was the first thing I wanted to use so flip it over and you want to run your tape along that very small quarter inch panel mine's a little bit bigger than yours will be again because I just had to alter those measurements just to fit this piece so I'm just running a piece along there and a piece um, along this side okay make sure that's all nicely secure so the red tape is always very good if you are using um, anything with like a gloss or a sheen to it my pokey tool there 
Okay, so I'm just going to take off the backing. Just do one side at a time. And then you just want to basically, I'm trying to remember which way is easiest to do it so that you get, yeah. So just fold that piece right over, okay? And fold it in half so you've got two of the panels folded. So you should have two facing you. If you do that and then just lie it down completely flat, like so, you will then have a perfect square. Okay, and that's one of your columns or your pillars. So again, then with this side here, just take off that backing, fold it over. So you've got two of them, okay, facing up. And you should have one and then that half inch panel underneath and just lie the whole thing down. And again, you will have your squares. So now straight away, it stands up. But it's a bit boring like that, so we want to add some more to it. So you will have your mat now that you want to put in the middle. Now I'm going to do something different, and I haven't done this um, for a while, but I absolutely love the, um, the result it gives, and that's um, embossing um, vellum. So I have got, this was the embossing folder. Oh gosh, I'm dropping everything today. This was the embossing folder that we received, um, and it matches the pattern on this beautiful piece here that we got. So again, I thought this with wedding and that kind of theme, just vellum and all those nice pearlized tones. And I just thought embossing folder and vellum is just gonna be brilliant. So what you wanna do is with your, if you are gonna do similar to me, with that matte piece, that's three and three quarters by five and three quarters, you want to sit that in your embossing folder. So I've got my piece here and the pattern's generic, it kind of repeats itself, so it doesn't matter too much, but I do want to make sure it's lined up just so I get, because it doesn't quite meet the top and bottom, so I'm just gonna make sure it stays nice and straight. Like so. Okay, so I've now got my embossing folder, um, embossing folder, my dye machine set up for embossing folders. So I'm just gonna pop my plate, Get that one down flat there and this one and just run that one through you can hear it really cutting through that vellum okay so let's take the folder out put that one back through So now, when you take this out, look at the gorgeous effect it leaves on the vellum. It's, gives, it's like a paper piercing effect. It creates a really white, where it's kind of almost breaking through the vellum. It goes very white and it is just gorgeous. I love it. So I am gonna now with my, just grab my mat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distress over the top of this with the gold ink that we received this gold ink pad with the um, kit. So just ink up whatever it is you use for blending and just rub over the top. And it will just start to really bring out that gorgeous design. And you can use any colour ink for this, it doesn't have to be gold. You should be able to start to see, and this has got a shine to it as well, this, and it just looks, there we go, it's just gorgeous, it's really, really nice. So I'm going to carry on finishing this. Okay, so there you go, I've finished that piece, and just look how that's transformed. What was just a plain piece of vellum has now become a beautiful textured um, paper. So that's all ready for me to mat on the back. Now it's a little bit tacky because this is a heavy pigment. Um, you can see it's all on my fingers there. So I'm just going to get cleaned up. Okay, so that is pretty much dry. So now because I've got this darker kind of gold over the top now, um, vellum generally when you have um, like a double sided tape or a glue behind it, you will see it. But with this one here, because I've now um, put the gold over it, it becomes quite dark. So I'm just putting a very thin amount of my wet glue just 
in parts of it just to kind of keep it in place and it should just blend in and you shouldn't actually notice this glue so it's still actually a little bit wet because I can see it's come off on my mat so I'm gonna be ever so careful and then just sit yours in again and you should have a nice even border on the top and the bottom and on the sides okay so that's now all dry and if I just bring it up closer then and it can, can you just see it's just it's gorgeous and I'm hoping the pictures will do this justice when you you see it at the beginning so I've already um, got my two strips here so these were the five and a half by one and five and a half by three quarters and I've just this was white but I've just um, gone over it with my um, with that gold ink again just so just to keep everything matching and kind of all tying in together so you're going to stick it across there and that's up to you whether you want to go at the top in the middle but again I'm doing mine at the bottom because I want it to look the same and make sure that it's flush and it should when you pull it out make sure you pull out your sides so that it all lines up perfectly so just pop some glue on the ends of both of those actually I'm going to take that glue off I've got a wet wipe here and just dry that and I'm going to use red tape because again I am sticking it onto that slightly shiny surface okay so just decide whereabouts you want it do one side first make sure your sides nice and flush I'm coming up about one inch stick that one down and then I can just go across to this side here and just make sure that it lines up with that end there okay and then just keep checking it does dry completely and I've wiped it as well with a dry cloth because that gets rid of a lot of the um, any kind of residue and then that one is going to go over the top just giving you that lovely band now if you want to stamp a sentiment here before or you may just be um, popping another kind of um, you know a sticker or a separate piece um, with the sentiment on you may be doing your sentiment somewhere else but with this piece here again because I've got that um, pigment ink I'm going to run another strip of my red tape along this piece. So again, this would be nice for um, a golden wedding anniversary. So I'm not going to put, um, well, there is a sentiment. I might put a sentiment. I'm not sure. So again, this one here, you should have a nice border at the top and bottom. So do one side first and then it will meet up perfectly with the other end. Again, if I just bring that up, and you can see now just when it catches how shiny that is. And just test it, but it should all lie completely flat, which it does. And again, go that way as well. But it will naturally pop up, and whoever gets it will know that that's how it's meant to be anyway. So that's that piece done. So now we've got the fun part of decorating it. So we also received in the kit these gorgeous and get them without catching them I need to put them back in the clear these beautiful um, laser cut um, sentiments so if I just bring them up there and you cut them all out separately so I'm going to have a think about which ones I want to do but I'm going to do a little cluster and a little nest of something here and then we also received this pack of these dried flowers. Now I mentioned in the unboxing that when you add, you can add pigment to these, you can add a very, very small amount of a watercolor and it will bleed into the leaves because these are all paper. And just to show you, here's one that I've done using that gold. And you can just see how nice that's gonna be. So I'm gonna have a cluster of these flowers in the corner here with a laser cut image and possibly the happily ever after stamp that we also received which has that font there. So I'm gonna have a play around, get all those bits and pieces ready. Okay, so I've just been playing around, I've just distressed, um, distressed, I've just covered all of these with that gold ink. Um, and I've got a variety of sizes. There are so many, because it's such fine paper. There are tons here, all kind of stuck together. So they're gonna last ages. And then all I do is just, um, any kind of um, stylus that you've got, um, anything with like a large ball on the end, just, rub around inside there kind of if it's small ones just you can kind of do this with them and you can see that it just brings them to life and then what I'm going to use is I got the faceted gems from last month's kit and these are obviously gold so it works perfectly and these large ones will go perfectly in the large flowers and then the small ones I have got um, 
I don't know whether to use, this is my own stash, but I've got the Nouveau um, Glitter. Um, what's this one here actually? I can't remember what this one's called. Um, oh, Aztec Gold. Or I've got the Liquid Pearls, the Ranger Liquid Pearls. So one of those is going to go in the smaller flowers. Okay, so there is the finished card. So I went for the bird cage, um, which was one of those laser cut pieces. I stuck with three flowers in the end and I've used my hot glue to secure these. Um, I've put a little bow in there. Again, I've used the hot glue. I've put a little pearl in the middle of that flower. And then I went for the sentiment in the middle. So this is the Happily Ever After stamp that came in the kit. And then I used the embossing powder from a couple of kits ago which was champers, so it was the perfect colour to match. So again, it's nice that we can you know, mix in our kits. And then again, I matted it on a piece of card which I coloured with the same gold that I done for this strip here. And then I've just finished with three of the faceted gems again on that side there. But I think that is a gorgeous, really luxurious. You can see it really catches that it's really shiny and it just stands up perfectly on its own. So I forgot to mention as well, on the back, you just add a mat you can then write your, your um, message and stamp your sentiment again I don't really know what this one's going to be so I'm going to put another mat with the sentiment kind of in the middle there I guess and then I can write to and from um, if you've got anything overhanging like there just fold it that way and then it will obviously fit in the car because if you do it that way then it will overhang but that way it won't so that is mine done. So I'm going to fold it flat that way and it will fit perfectly in my white envelope which I've prepared there. And that is my other one there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. As always, all the information for the Hobby Base um, kit will be shared in the description box below this video. And um, everything's always on my blog as well, so you can pop over there. But if you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.